Let's go back and take a look at the history. Now, we talked about the history earlier when we were talking about the uh, results um, where we talked about the, the test results from a previous test. But this is what the test history will look like once you've actually done some testing. Now, keep in mind uh, what I said earlier about our API settings. If we go into API settings and say we don't want to store results, we won't get this button. Uh, and so to eliminate confusion, everybody is set to store results by default. Um, that was not the case in earlier uh, earlier versions of Tenon, but now it is. So you'll always have this view results unless you say you don't want to store it. Uh, now this is a list of all of our tests that we've done, uh, all the way down to our beginning. We don't give you every single test run because some people have thousands and thousands and thousands. We give you um, we give you partial a partial list of the last uh, hundred or so. Um, but here's your test history. Now again, as I said before, you can filter by your project. Uh, and then here's some of the other information here. Uh, the unique ID, and that's actually only the last several uh, characters in your unique ID. When it was, what the API response was, uh, what the URL was, the project, the issue counts, and then that link to view results. If you end up with a situation where you uh, are anticipating test results, and you're not seeing them, you may want to come in here to take a look because what you want to see is 200. But if there's something wrong with the URL, let's say uh, the URL that you've entered, you've entered an incorrect URL and it can't be found, then this would have a 404 in it and stuff like that. Uh, so that's, uh, that's important to take a look for uh, in your test history because this is where, this is the only place that that is shown. So this is a quick overview of your test history, and we discussed the results in an earlier video.